So to start, I'd like to introduce the idea of antibiotic uh, resistant infections. Now, so to address these shortcomings, this study proposes the encapsulation of nicin, a naturally occurring bacteriocin in chitosan nanoparticles in an effort to enhance nicin's antimicrobial and antioxidant properties. So our objectives for this uh, research was to first encapsulate nicin into chitosan nanoparticles. We also synthesized the parallel set of nanoparticles, which included tannic acid, a strong antioxidant. To, after synthesis of the nanoparticles, we wanted to determine their characteristics. And in their characteristics, we examined the structure to see if there was cross-linking. Uh, we examined the charge, which is very beneficial to its antimicrobial activity. We um, examined encapsulation efficiency to see how successful we were in keeping nicin inside of those chitosan nanoparticles. And the kinetics of nicin release to see how fast the nanoparticles release the nicin under the given time. We also investigated antioxidant activity of the nanoparticles. And finally, we wanted to investigate the antimicrobial activity of the nanoparticles. Uh, and we did this by the minim minimum inhibitory concentrations, uh, denoted as MIC, which will be compared to that of the nanoparticles' singular components, which included nicin, chitosan, nanochitosan, and tannic acid. We wanted to see for possible synergistic effects for antimicrobial and antioxidant activity. Now for the materials, we chose nicin because it is a bactericin secreted by Lactococcus lactis. Um, it has strong inhibitory activity against gram-positive bacteria. It's a non-toxic preservative in dairy and meat products. And according to the FDA, it's GRAS, which means generally regarded as safe. The drawbacks of nicin is that it tends to leak out very quickly in lipid-filled environments. So in order to reverse that, or to address that, we wanted to encapsulate it in chitosan. Uh, chitosan is obtained via the deacetylation of chitin um, found in shrimp, lobster, and fungi such as aspergillus. It has strong inhibitory activity against gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, and it's utilized in drug delivery systems, gene delivery vectors, vaccine, and protein delivery. And also, I uh, mentioned before that we uh, introduced tannic acid to a parallel set of uh, nanoparticles. Uh, tannic acid in itself is a strong antioxidant. It's used in the clarification of wines, and it has the ability to develop complexes with proteins. So to synthesize the nanoparticles, uh, we use the method called ionotro ionotropic gelation. Now this ionotropic gelation method included uh, preparing 0.5% chitosan solution in 1% acetic acid. We ultrasonicated it to make sure that it would help the chitosan dissolve into this acetic acid. We then set it under magnetic stirring to fully ensure the um, dissolution into the acetic acid. We adjusted the pH to 5.5. We added one milliliter of nicin and tannic acid solution according to uh, what we have here on table one. Then we ultrasonicated it again for 45 minutes. We did that to make sure that everything was incorporated into the nanoparticle. After adding, we added 0.25% TPP, which is sodium tripolyphosphate. Now this TPP was actually used to cross-link um, nicin and chitosan to make sure that both of them actually incorporated into each other. We ultracentrifuged it at one hour at 25 degrees Celsius for 9,000 RPM to separate the precipitate from the supernatant. We took the supernatant and we uh, labeled and saved the supernatant for encapsulation analysis. And then once we were done with that, we took the pellet that was left in the centrifuge tube. We uh, spread it along a watch glass to allow it to air dry. And after air drying, we took a mortar and pestle and grinded down the nanoparticles to a fine sand-like uh, sample. Now to determine the nicin content of the nanoparticles, we use something called the indirect method. The indirect method includes two things, loading capacity and encapsulation efficiency, which were determined using these two following equations. And as a result shown in table two, the results show that all nanoparticles were encapsulated with a high efficiency while maintaining a low loading capacity. While no correlation between nicin content can be in the synthetic mixture and encapsulation efficiency can be made, loading capacity values show consistent increase with an increase in nicin concentration. 
Now, the ratio of residual amino groups, also known as RAG, was something that determined charge and cross-linking in the nanoparticles. To do that, we first wanted to find the positively charged amino groups using this equation. And from what we had from that equation, we plugged it into the RAG equation, giving us our results on table three. Now, when in analysis of our table three uh, results, our RAG shows that values are predicting positive surface charges in prepared nanoparticles and reflect cross-linking efficiency. And what we noticed, uh, this trend where there was the nanoparticles with a four milligrams per milliliter uh, concentration displayed the lowest value for our RAG in both sets of samples. So we can see here, we have the 4.0 and the 4.0, they, they have the lowest R RAG for both. We also put our nanoparticle, the solid samples, through FTIR spectra. We did two runs. The first run included NCN, which is nice and encapsulated in Kaidazan nanoparticles, um, and comparing them to their single, singular components of just nicin and just Kaidazan and just nanokaidazan. What we found in analysis of figure two was that interaction between Kaidazan chains and TPP provide proof for the success of cross-linking and nanoparticle formation. And to be a little more specific, around 3500, if we're looking at the 3500 range, we see that there's actually a broadening which goes all the way to the 2900 range, which kind of obscures the CH2 stretching. What we also see around 1200 is that there is a peak at 1200 and at 890, which is about here in the nanoparticles, which are another clear evidence of cross-linking. After the first spectra was done, we took another IR spectra, but this time of the NCN uh, nanoparticles, the NCNTA nanoparticles with tannic acid included, and tannic acid by the, itself. And what we found, similar to the first IR spectra, 3500 and 3000 are at 2900, there was a broadening, but this broadening was actually wider for the NCNTA nanoparticles, which you can see here in comparison kind of uh, opened up a little bit. And also to confirm the presence of tannic acid, we saw a 1307 reciprocal centimeter, which is around here. Um, it's a peak which showed the hydroxyl vibration of the phenolic groups in the nanoparticles as well. To determine how much nicin was released, we did this in vitro uh, to determine the kinetics of nicin. So what we did was that we measured the absorbances of nicin over two weeks using a UV spectrometer um, at 280 nanometers. We determined the mass and the percent release using these following equations. And what we noticed was that the 0 0.1 milligrams per milliliter nano, uh, NCN nanoparticles displayed a significant release profile according to this blue um, line here on the graph. Um, this suggests that nicin concentration may play an important factor in the release kinetics. This conclusion is supported by the increase in nicin concentration and the correlated decrease in the release itself. After doing the kinetics of a release just for the NCN nanoparticles, we compared it to the average of the tannic acid nanoparticles. Things with that we noticed were that one, we saw a burst. We observed a burst within the four, first 48 hours, denoted over here, and then we also saw another burst at 168 to, uh, to 216 hours over here. This shows that the nanoparticles with the tannic acid displayed a higher initial increase, which approached the release from the nanoparticles without tannic acid when they reached around 12 days. For our antioxidant assay, what we did was we recorded the absorbances using a microplate reader. And we use the Trolloc standard curve located in figure six to calculate the actual antioxidants in the nanoparticles. What we found was that tannic acid by itself is a very strong, as I mentioned before, it was a very strong antioxidant um, agent. The second most strongest antioxidant agent that we had from the nanoparticles was the 4.0 milligrams per milliliter NCNTA, which had a 0 0.004 per, uh, millimolar uh, antioxidants. For the antimicrobial assay, we use the Clinical Laboratory Standards Institute CLSI turbid, turbidimetric method. And in order to do this, 
we took 5,000 micrograms per milliliter stock solution to prepare. Now for each nanoparticulate, uh, several concentrations were prepared with Mueller-Hinton II broth. Each concentration was about 1,000, 500, 250, and so on and so on micrograms per milliliter. The pH of each solution was adjusted to 5.5, and 5 milliliters of each testing solution was pipetted into test tubes, which were then closed and autoclaved um, to ensure that all the testing solutions were sterile, that there was no contamination of the uh, testing solutions. After sterilizing the testing solutions, we added five, 50 microliters of bacterial broth culture that was grown over 24 hours. We used the uh, bacteria Staph aureus, E. coli, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa for testing. Uh, the inoculated tubes were then allowed, uh, placed in an incubator for uh, 24 hours at 37 degrees Celsius to see if there was any growth. After that, we examined each tube seeing if there was any growth, and then we recorded it. And from our recordings, we were able to determine the minimum inhibitory concentrations. Now, before we move on, I'd like to take a look at figure seven. This, these were test results uh, from the CLSI test. Over here, we have the bacterial control, the positive control. This is the negative control, our testing, inoculated testing solutions. And what we did, we compared the inoculated testing solutions after the growth to see whether it resembled to the positive control indicating positive growth, or negative control uh, indicating negative growth or antimicrobial um, activity. And on figure eight, one thing I'd like to point out is that on the left side here, we have the nanoparticles and that the nanoparticles, with the exception of NCNTA 0.2, displayed a lower minimum inhibitory concentrations, which is better activity against the bacteria compared to the singular components located on the right-hand side of the graph. So to, uh, for a little discussion and conclusion, composite nanomaterials containing chitosan and nicin in different ratios were successfully prepared by ionic gelation using sodium tripolyphosphate. So this tells you that the cross-linking work, we were able to encapsulate the uh, nicin into the chitosan nanoparticles. The percent R rag values show positive surface charges in the prepared nanoparticles and suggest their great potential as antimicrobial agents. Encapsulation of higher nicin concentrations results in a slight decrease in R-RAG, which can be related to chitosan nicin complexation, where tannic acid addition results in an increase in R-RAG, presumably due to the nicin removed from the chitosan to nicin ionic complexes and instead placed into, included in the tannic acid and nicin complexes. Now the NCN exhibits a broadening of the band on the IR spectra at 3,500, obscuring the CH2 stretching at 2,900 reciprocal centimeters, which shows formation of hydrogen bonds between NH and OH upon cross-linking. The peaks at 1,200 uh, reciprocal centimeters and 890 are another clear evidence of cross-linking. The 0 0.1 milligram per milliliter uh, nano, uh, NCN nanoparticles displayed a significant release profile, so they released very quickly compared to the other set of nanoparticles, which suggests that concentration must play a big, uh, an important factor in the release kinetics. Now, tannic acid had slightly increased the release of the nicin from the nanoparticles, which suggests that the addition of tannic acid shortens residency time of nicin inside of nanochitosan. The tannic acid alone had a low value of negative 13.753 millimolars trollox, which indicates high antioxidant activity, yet the second highest was the 4.0 NCNTA nanoparticles at 6.765 millimolars of trollox. NCNTA displayed an enhancement on the MIC of gram-negative microbes, 125 micrograms per milliliter, against E. coli and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. When compared to NCN 4.0, which displayed a MIC of 250 micrograms per milliliters for the same microbes while maintaining the same MIC for the gram-positive Staph aureus. Now, in conclusion, the nanoparticles were successfully encapsulated, which resulted in a prevention of quick nicin release, a modest introduction of antioxidant property, and the enhancement of nicin's antimicrobial activity against a broad range of both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria.